After leaving Southampton on the 10th of April 1912, Titanic called at Cherbourg in France and Queenstown now Cobb in Ireland before heading westwards towards New York. On the 14th of April 1912, four days into the crossing and about 375 miles or 600 kilometers south of Newfoundland, she hit an iceberg at 11.40 p.m. ship time. The glancing collision caused Titanic's hull plates to buckle inwards along her starboard side and opened five of her 16 watertight compartments to the sea. The ship gradually filled with water and found it around 2.20 a.m. Passengers and some crew members were evacuated in lifeboats, many of which were launched only partly filled. A disproportionate number of men, over 90% of those in second class were left aboard because of a women and children first protocol followed by the officers loading the lifeboats. By 2.10 a.m. the Titanic's upper decks were underwater, and less than 10 minutes later, she broke apart and founded, with well over 1,000 people still aboard. Those still aboard who did not go down with her were cast into the frigid waters of the North Atlantic. Many of those in the water died within minutes from hypothermia. The only people to survive the foundering itself were those who managed to reach two of the collapsible lifeboats which had not been launched in time. They being the waterlocked collapsible A and the overturned collapsible B. A handful of survivors were also pulled from the water after the ship went down. Just under two hours after the Titanic founded, the Kinard Line RMS Carpathia arrived on the scene of the sinkhole, where she brought aboard an estimated 705 survivors. The disaster was greeted with worldwide shock and outrage at the huge loss of life and the regulatory and operational failures that had led to it. Public inquiries in Britain and the United States led to major improvements in maritime safety. One of the most important legacies was the establishment in 1914 of the International Convention for the Safety of Life at CSOLAS, which still governs maritime safety today. Additionally, several new wireless regulations were passed around the world in an effort to learn from the many missteps in wireless communications which could have saved many more passengers. Many of the survivors lost all of the money and possessions and were left destitute. Many families, particularly those of crew members from Southampton, lost the primary breadwinners. They were helped by an outpouring of public sympathy and charitable donations. Some of the male survivors, notably the White Star Line's chairman, J. Bruce Ismay, were accused of cowardice for leaving the ship while people were still on board. And he faced social ostracism that followed him for the rest of his life and beyond. A survivor of Titanic came to see the master. Today a lady who had survived the Titanic disaster came to see him. I am told, she said, that you advised not to travel by that ship. The master replied in the affirmative. She questioned, did you know that this would happen? The master said God inspires man's heart. Francis Davis Millet was an American painter, sculptor, and writer who died in the sinking of the RMS Titanic on April 15, 1912. He was last seen helping women and children into lifeboats. His body was recovered after the sinking by the cable boat Mackay Bennett and returned to East Bridgewater, Massachusetts, where he was buried in Central Cemetery. Agnes Parson told this story happened in April 20th, the first day of the master in Washington, D.C. When we reached home Abdu Baha's evening meal was served to him in the morning room and we talked for some time. 
I asked you about Mr. Francis Davis Millet who was recently lost in the Titanic disaster, telling Abdu Baha that he had been very dearly beloved an artist who, as well as his work had been appreciated in both Europe and America Abdu Baha's answer was, where one has been devoted to his work in life art or whatever it may be, it is regarded as worship and he is undoubtedly surrounded by the mercy of God. Mahmoud's Diary, April 22, 1912, Washington, in the afternoon. The Master spoke at another gathering about the sinking of the Titanic. He prayed for the souls of the passengers and expressed his condolences to the survivors. In the evening, Mrs. Parsons held a dinner in his honor to which all the friends were invited. At the table, Abdu Baha said, Consider the confirmations of the blessed beauty. What he has done, how he has brought us to the house of such a personage, who in the utmost love has prepared such a feast in our honor. The power and influence of the word of God have united the East and the West. How perfect are his heavenly favors and how all-embracing his divine bounties. Washington, D.C. Star Newspaper Title, Due to Speed Mania April 21, 1912 In an interview after his address, and giving answer to a specific question, the Baha'i leader declared that the disaster to the White Star Liner Titanic, much as he deplored it, was only an outward expression of the too rapid development of the age, progress too fast both. Americans and Europeans seem to be possessed of the mania of speed, he said. It is true in this country in particular that growth in all directions has progressed too rapidly. Moderation should be practiced in all things. Be temperate, even in the size of the ships you build and in the speed, in your railroads and the schedules you expect your trains to maintain. It was a pitiful waste of life that came because of the effort to save a few hours in time, rushing a great vessel at top speed when it was known there was danger from ice when he entered the hall. Abdu Baha was greeted by the audience, all Bihars and the friends and guests rising, and after he had spoken and when he was seated on the platform, hundreds pressed around him, seeking to grasp his hand. April 1912. Talk at home of Mr. and Mrs. Arthur J. Parsons, 1700 18th Street, Northwest, Washington, D.C. Notes by Joseph H. Hannon. Today I have been speaking from dawn until now, yet because of love, fellowship, and desire to be with you, I have come here to speak again briefly. Within the last few days a terrible event has happened in the world an event saddening to every heart and grieving every spirit. I refer to the Titanic disaster, in which many of our fellow human beings were drowned. A number of beautiful souls passed beyond this earthly life. Although such an event is indeed regrettable, we must realize that everything which happens is due to some wisdom, and that nothing happens without a reason. Therein is a mystery, but whatever the reason and mystery, it was a very sad occurrence, one which brought tears to many eyes and distress to many souls. I was greatly affected by this disaster. Some of those who were lost voyaged on the Cedric with us as far as Naples and afterward sailed upon the other ship. When I think of them, I am very sad indeed. But when I consider this calamity in another aspect, I am consoled by the realization that the worlds of God are infinite, that though they were deprived of this existence, they have other opportunities in the life beyond, even as Christ has said, in my Father's house are many mansions. 
they were called away from the temporary and transferred to the eternal. They abandoned this material existence and entered the portals of the spiritual world. Foregoing the pleasures and comforts of the earthly, they now partake of a joy and happiness far more abiding and real, for they have hastened to the kingdom of God. The mercy of God is infinite and it is our duty to remember these departed souls in our prayers and supplications that they may draw nearer and nearer to the source itself. These human conditions may be likened to the matrix of the mother from which a child is to be born into the spacious outer world. At first the infant finds it very difficult to reconcile itself to its new existence. It cries as if not wishing to be separated from its narrow abode and imagining that life is restricted to that limited space. It is reluctant to leave its home, but nature forces it into this world. Having come into its new conditions, it finds that it has passed from darkness into a sphere of radiance. From gloomy and restricted surroundings, it has been transferred to a spacious and delightful environment. Its nourishment was the blood of the mother. Now it finds delicious food to enjoy. Its new life is filled with brightness and beauty. It looks with wonder and delight upon the mountains, meadows, and fields of green, the rivers and fountains, the wonderful stars. It breathes the life-quickening atmosphere, and then it praises God for its release from the confinement of its former condition and attainment to the freedom of a new realm. This analogy expresses the relation of the temporal world to the life hereafter. The transition of the soul of man from darkness and uncertainty to the light and reality of the eternal kingdom. At first it is very difficult to welcome death, but after attaining its new condition the soul is grateful, for it has been released from the bondage of the limited to enjoy the liberties of the unlimited. It has been freed from a world of sorrow, grief and trials to live in a world of unending bliss and joy. The phenomenal and physical have been abandoned in order that it may attain the opportunities of the ideal and spiritual. Therefore the souls of those who have passed away from earth and completed their span of mortal pilgrimage in the titanic disaster have hastened to a world superior to this. They have soared away from these conditions of darkness and dim vision into the realm of light. These are the only considerations which can comfort and console those whom they have left behind. Furthermore, these events have deeper reasons. Their object and purpose is to teach man certain lessons. We are living in a day of reliance upon material conditions. Men imagine that the great size and strength of a ship the perfection of machinery or the skill of a navigator will ensure safety. But these disasters sometimes take place that men may know that God is the real protector. If it be the will of God to protect man, a little ship may escape destruction, whereas the greatest and most perfectly constructed vessel with the best and most skillful navigator may not survive a danger such as was present on the ocean. The purpose is that the people of the world may turn to God, the one protector, that human souls may rely upon his preservation and know that he is the real safety. These events happen in order that man's faith may be increased and strengthened. Therefore, although we feel sad and disheartened, we must supplicate God to turn our hearts to the kingdom and pray for these departed souls with faith in his infinite mercy, so that Although they have been deprived of this earthly life, they may enjoy a new existence in the supreme mansions of the Heavenly Father. Let no one imagine that these words imply that man should not be thorough and careful in his undertakings. God has endowed man with intelligence so that he may safeguard and protect himself. Therefore, he must provide and surround himself with all that scientific skill can produce. He must be deliberate thoughtful and thorough in his purposes. Build the best ship and provide the most experienced captain. Yet withal, let him rely upon God and consider God as the one keeper. If God protects, nothing can imperil man's safety. And if it be not his will to safeguard, 
no amount of preparation and precaution will avail. Mahmud's diary, September 15, 1912, Kenosha. The master had an appointment in Kenosha and was preparing to go there. He was accompanied by drive. Not a Japanese believer in these companions. On the way we had to change trains. Although we hurried, we missed the second train. The friends were saddened but Abdu'l-Bahá said, Oh, it matters not. There is a wisdom in this we left by the next train and found that the train we had missed was wrecked and some of the passengers injured. It was clear that it had collided with another train. Abdu'l-Bahá said this too, was the protection of the blessed beauty. He then narrated the episode of his leaving Alexandria for America. Sim proposed that we leave via London by the SS Titanic which sank on the same voyage, the blessed beauty guided us to come direct.